Good morning. And welcome to St. Anne's Parish as we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. Our celebrant this morning is Father Schaffner. Please rise. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My friends, today we celebrate the great feast of Pentecost. Uh, this is the final day of our Easter season, and 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, as the apostles uh, were holed up in uh, the upper room, uh, the Holy Spirit came upon them, giving them great power, giving them gifts of tongues giving them the courage and the strength to go out and boldly proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. That same spirit is given to us in our day uh, to help us to do the same, to evangelize to our families and to our friends uh, and to the world. And as we prepare ourselves now to enter into these sacred mysteries of Jesus Christ, let us begin by calling to mind our sins and let us ask God for his pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Holy Spirit in the glory, the 
glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church and every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together, and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At the sound they gathered in large crowd, but they were confused, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native tongue, language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. 
There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one Spirit. The Word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send from the Father, the Spirit of truth that proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me, and you also testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. So, uh, as many of you know, I'm from Kentucky, and one of the big things about Kentucky uh, that people think of uh, when they think of the state, obviously, is, is horses. And a few weeks ago, uh, Kentucky had uh, one of the great traditions that is known around the world, uh, that being the Kentucky Derby, uh, May 1st, uh, for always the first Saturday uh, in May, of course. Last year, I think they did it like in September, October, uh, because of uh, the virus and such. Um, and my brother, uh, my little brother Donald, he, he's a graphic designer and, and he used to work for a company called Blood Horse. And it was a thoroughbred industry uh, company and he would do a lot of their designs. And he always lamented uh, every year when the Derby came around because uh, his birthday happens to be right around the time of Derby. His, his birthday's on the 3rd of May. Uh, so he'd always have to work on his, his birthday weekend. Uh, and so it would put a little uh, cramp in his uh, plans for the, to be with his family and to, to celebrate in that way. And uh, he never liked it, but he knew it was part of his job. Now, being from Kentucky, you know, watching the horses go around uh, the track, it was something that, that I was never really uh, a big, you know, I wasn't really into it that much. It's, you know, when you're in Kentucky, you don't always go to uh, the races. You know, I, I mentioned last night, it's kind of like being in Minnesota and, and never going to the Mall of America. It's, uh, it's more for tourists. Uh, and yet, I, I still I do know a lot of friends. They, they went to the Derby. They, uh, they wore the big hats. They had their pictures taken. They, they took part in the mint and juleps uh, and, and all of that. Uh, they, they say that the race, of course, is the most exciting two minutes in sports. Maybe. 
I don't know. But you know, it, it, there's something about watching uh, the horses go around the track uh, that is exciting, and I, and I think a lot of people do do really, really enjoy that. Uh, and yet, you know, I was thinking about that, and I was thinking, well, you know what? There, there's there is another sport about going around the track time and time and time and time again, and that is car racing. And I don't know how many of you are like NASCAR fans or anything. Uh, anyone? No, a few, a couple. And so uh, I know it's more popular down kind of in the, uh, the lower Midwest and Indiana and where the Indy 500 and such. Uh, but NASCAR is this, this wonderful uh, sport where uh, the cars, they're, they're racing around this track over 200 miles an hour, uh, 200 laps, which seems like quite excessive. But 200 laps around and around and around and around. And there's, there's these rules. And, and I never really understood the rules too well. And I never really understood uh, for many years growing up, you know, how that is kind of a sport. And yet I, I came to understand recently as, as uh, uh, you know, some, some information just kind of like came to me uh, just randomly, uh, I, that the, the people, the drivers, you know, are real athletes because, you know, as you're driving these cars around the track 200 miles an hour, uh, it takes a lot of upper body strength, you know, to simply keep the car on track. And as you're rounding the turns, Make sure you're in your lane. Make sure you're not uh, uh, running into the other cars. You know, it takes a lot of physical ability to, to be there in the car to uh, sustain the, the speeds and the G-forces and the heat. You know, sometimes I, I, I've, I've heard that the, the heat within the car can be 120, 140 degrees. So it's quite uh, the, the test of endurance, more than anything else. You know, NASCAR is a sport of endurance. Uh, and, and one of the things that, that I, I came to, to learn recently uh, was really uh, the rules of NASCAR, because I didn't understand anything about the flags. Uh, but I came to understand some of that recently. Uh, I heard a, a, a short talk uh, on what the colors meant. And of course, you know, there are some colors that, that mean things that you might expect. Red, you know, stop. Uh, yellow, caution. Green, go. Of course, we all know the, the black and white checkered flag. You know, you finish the race. Uh, there's a blue flag uh, with a yellow stripe diagonally across, uh, saying there's a, a faster car behind you, move over for them, out of respect. Uh, but it was, it was another flag uh, that, that really intrigued me, and it got me thinking a bit, and, and that is the white flag. And some of you that are fans probably know what the white flag means. Uh, the white flag means that you have one lap to go. You know, you've gone 199 laps around this track, and now you have one to go. The race is almost over. And, and, I, and I think that's, that, that's such a, a beautiful analogy, you know, for, for our own life. Because, you know, we go around the track of this life, and we go through, you know, certain seasons of our life, and we're, we're, we're in it, and we're enduring the race, and we're, we're wondering, like, when is this race going to be over? When is this uh, struggle going to be over? When is this uh, season of my life going to be over? When am I going to move on to the next thing, the next stage of my life? And, and wouldn't it be great, you know, if, if God waved that white flag for us, right? To kind of tell us, just one more lap and you're done. You know, just keep going, just one more time around. And yet, so often is the case that he doesn't do that, right? You know, sometimes he just says, you know, you got to trust me, keep going, keep enduring, and the race will be over soon. Just trust me. You know, I think so often is the case, we kind of go through these things, and, and we're, we're going around the track of this, this struggle in life, and we're, we are wondering, when's it going to be over? And we're waiting for the white flag, and God's ne not necessarily letting us see it. And yet, then in those moments, what do we do? We lift up our flag our own white flag, which has a different meaning, of course. You know, we typically think of that as, I just surrender, I give up, I'm done. It's too much, I can't endure anymore, right? You know, the apostles in that upper room on the Feast of Pentecost, I, I think that's probably about where they were at as well. You know, because this was 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, 10 days after the ascension of Christ, and now he has ascended into heaven, body and soul. He's no longer physically with them. And now they're questioning, they're, they're wondering, what do we do from here? And, and how do we go forward? How do we move forward? You know, what do we do? We're, we're scared because if we go out into the streets, they know that we're followers of Christ. 
You know, are they going to arrest us? Are they going to, uh, to torture us, imprison us, kill us? You know, they're uncertain. And, and I'm sure, you know, after, even after 10 days of just kind of being holed up in that room together, they don't really know what's next. And they don't know when this stage of their life is going to be over. They can move on. And yet, you know, God is right there. And, and he's waving that white flag for them. They don't see it. He's telling, he's, he's, he's shouting, and he's, he's trying to get them to listen to say, don't worry. You know, the race is almost over. You're about to move on to that next race. You're about to start uh, the next stage uh, in your life as my disciples. Just hold on a bit longer. Because I want to give you the power of my spirit. I don't want you to give up. I want you to lay claim to that power. You're so close to the end of this race. You're so close to the victory. Don't give up. Don't give in. And it was exactly at that moment that the events of Pentecost took place today. The Spirit comes into the room and he fills them. And this is a beautiful moment. You know, this has been one of the stories in, in the scriptures that have been so vivid for me over the years. And just imagining what that must have been like uh, to be together with the apostles and then all of a sudden to have that rushing wind come in and that great big noise in your ears and to wonder what's going on and then to be swept up with the Spirit. The very flame of God, the fire of God coming to rest upon their heads. You know, awesome sight. And then, but even, even more significant and perhaps even more impactful upon them was not just the vision of this and the experience of this, but it was what was happening in their hearts. Because what was happening in their hearts now was, was all of this fear and all this uncertainty and all of this anxiety about what's next is suddenly washed away and replaced. And it's replaced with a boldness. And it's replaced with a courage. And it's replaced with a purpose. They're given these beautiful gifts. The gift to be able to speak in tongues. To proclaim uh, the, the message of Jesus Christ and the person of Jesus Christ to everyone that they meet. And they're no longer afraid to go out into the streets now and proclaim this faith and to claim Jesus Christ risen from the dead. They're now being sent forth, they're beginning a new race. And, and I think, you know, this is uh, where, uh, you know, God will, will step in so, so beautifully in our own lives. You know, sometimes just at those moments when we feel like we just want to give up, like we think our strength is gone, this is where God's gonna say, I'm now going to give you my spirit and I will be your strength and you're gonna experience that and you're gonna do bold things in my name. You know, I think so often we, we think of the Holy Spirit and, and we think, and, and if, I, if you ask me any other day of, of the week, I might say that the Spirit is simply the giver of gifts. And that he is. You know, he's the one that's going to fill us with that boldness, that courage, that uh, faith, hope, charity. He's going to give us uh, uh, the, uh, the modesty and the generosity, the goodness, the kindness, the benevolence, everything that we need to truly live a Christ-like life. And yet... You know, Jesus tells us today in the gospel that he gives us something even more foundational, even more fundamental. And that he says, he says that this spirit that I will give you, the one who is coming, he is the spirit of truth. And he will lead you and he will guide you to all truth. And I think... This is so significant and this is so important for us because we can have all the boldness we want and we can have all the generosity and goodness that we'd like and yet if, we, if we're not grounded in the truth of Jesus Christ and if we're not grounded in the truth of his teachings and we're not grounded in the truth of who we are, then we can use those gifts in the wrong way. You know, we have to ask, you know, what is that truth ultimately that the Spirit instills in our hearts? And certainly, we can talk about the truths of everything that we learn in Scripture and everything that we learn in our tradition, that Jesus Christ is the very Son of God. He came into the world taking on our human flesh, taking on our human experience in all things but sin. So he knows our weakness. He knows our sorrow. And he came and he taught and he healed and he worked miracles. And then he gave himself up to death for each of us. Death on a cross. 
And yet that was not the end of the story. Because after dying on the cross, Jesus laid in the tomb for three days, and then he rose through his very power from the dead, conquering death and sin forever. It has no longer has any power over us. And then he ascended into heaven, and one day will come again to judge the living and the dead, and he will reign forever. That is a truth he's instilled in our hearts. And yet there is a truth about ourselves uh, in relation to God that, that he reveals as well. And that truth is that God is so much more powerful than your weakness. The truth is that God is so much more powerful than your sins. The truth is that God is victorious over all of your sorrows. The truth is that God is more powerful than all those voices in your head that try to lie to you and want to frighten you. God is so much more powerful than all the things in your heart that make you just want to give up. You know, the truth is that you are a child of God. You know, each one of you, a son or daughter of our Father in heaven. And because of that, when that truth is instilled in your heart, you can lay claim to his power, the power of his spirit, you know, when you need it most. Not just, you know, when you've gone those 199 laps around the track of whatever you're going through, and you're doing well, and, but you hit that last lap and you're, you're thinking you want to give up. That's when he enters in most powerfully. And maybe that's especially when you're going to experience that power. Because then you realize, yes, I belong to him, and he's conscious of me, and he remembers me, and he wants to strengthen me. That's exactly what he does. You know, he is our strength. You know, as, as we're going through whatever we go through in life, you know, we have to ask ourselves, you know, wouldn't it be a shame if we were just to give up when we're so close to, to the end? You know, wouldn't it be a shame if we were just to walk away when we're so close to the victory, to that checkered flag? You know, wouldn't it be a shame if we were to just give up when God is ready to pour himself completely into us? You know, that's the power of his spirit. Sometimes he makes us wait for it. But his timing is perfect. He's going to pour himself into us. We have to trust that. And we have to be ready to receive, which means we have to endure. We have to endure the race. We have to... Uh, keep going around those, that track time and time again, but always turning to him to say, Lord, I trust in you. And so if anything on, on this Pentecost day, let us embrace that truth that we are those beloved sons and daughters of our Lord, that he wants to give us his strength. He wants to give us his very life. He is there for us. He is our God and his Holy Spirit is truth. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My friends, let us now turn to our Father uh, and present to him all of our needs and petitions. For Pope Francis, our bishops, all priests and deacons, for all who hold and teach the Catholic faith, May they be anointed from on high for our fruitful ministry of preaching and service that they are all called to in the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord on this Pentecost, we pray for greater outpouring of the Holy Spirit in all that we do, a spirit of greater faith, hope, and love, a spirit of courage and strength, a spirit of reverence and right judgment, a spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We pray to the Lord. In thanksgiving for, many, for the many gifts and talents of those who dedicate their work at St. Anne's, for our parish and school staff and administration, for the volunteers of our councils and committees, for all our volunteers and those who quietly support our community in other ways, may they be rewarded for their generous outpouring of their energies. We pray to the Lord. For all students who have graduated this spring, or will graduate in coming days. For our St. Anne's fifth grade class, our high school seniors, and all college students. May they confidently move forward to use the knowledge and wisdom they have gained to contribute to the lives of others. We pray to the Lord. For the families of our parish of St. Anne's, our community of Lesur, and surrounding communities, may we continue to grow together in our faith of God and grow deeper in our commitment to support one another through the love of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. For the souls of all the faithful departed, may they come to share in the eternal banquet of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Almighty, eternal Father, on this Feast of Pentecost, we ask you to send out your Spirit upon us and imbue within our hearts uh, the life that you promise. Hear all of our prayers and answer them all in accord with your most holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> Mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anne and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, his assistant Andrew, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. And now, at the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only to say the word, and my soul shall be healed. One 
one hope, one peace, one church, one people, one love released. No one will come to me unless our God has left, and I shall them from the dead, one bread, one body, one cup, one call, one faith, one spirit, present in a song, one prayer, one blessing, one hope, one peace. Church, one people, one love released. <coughs> one breath, one body, one love. One cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. Gentile or Jew. Servant or free, woman or man, no more. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a note for, for all of the youth of our parish, uh, we have uh, some summer youth programs uh, put into place. We're, we're teaming up with St. Mary's uh, and, and Lee Center and Cleveland and Marysburg uh, churches as well uh, to present uh, Totus Tuus, uh, which is a, a kind of like a vacation Bible school for, for kids grades 1 through 12. Uh, this is on the last week of July, July 25th to the 30th, uh, different tracks, uh, grades 1 through 6 meet during the day grades 7 through 12 in the evening. Uh, and also a, a special vacation Bible school uh, for preschool students will take place the week of August 8th through the 12th. Uh, so again, that's for preschool. Uh, and so if you're interested, information can be found in the bulletin. Uh, it's on our website, uh, the weekly email that I send out to those on my mailing list. As well, there are information and registration packets in the back of church today. 
As we conclude our, our Mass today, let us offer our prayer to the Blessed Virgin. And, you know, this week is a, is a big week for many of our youth. Our fifth graders from St. Anne's are, are graduating. Our, our high school seniors next weekend are, are graduating. Uh, many of our uh, college students have either already graduated or will be graduating shortly. And so we want to lift up them uh, that the Holy Spirit uh, may imbue their hearts with a great desire to, to use the talents that they've been given uh, for the good of the world. And so let us offer our prayer to the Virgin for them. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Mm-hmm. <laughs>